Hi, here we are to talk about Xcode. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create an update to a um, video, a couple videos that I did in the past on uh, creating a weather service app. Um, and I'd like to update them for Xcode 7 and Swift 2. Uh, so here I am in Xcode, I've got version 7, and I'm gonna start with a new Xcode project and what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a new single view application under iOS application here. And I'll click next and I'll call this one, um, how about let's call it uh, weather app example. Okay. And we'll choose Swift as the language and you can include core data or not. We're actually not going to use core data. I'll just leave that checked for now. Um, and then I'll click next. And then you can save your project somewhere. Um, I think I'll put it in this folder here. And there we go. So here's our new project. And um, I'm gonna go to the storyboard first and create a couple things. And we'll come back to this and clean it up. I'm just gonna put a couple things in place for now. So here's my view controller. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a couple labels to hold some of the weather information. So what I'll do is I'll put a label on or in the view controller here. And maybe I'll drag it all the way across so it snaps to the guides. And this will be the temperature label. So this will say what the temperature is. And maybe I'll make the text a little bigger on that so the temperature is really giant so everybody can read it, right? So we want people to be able to read that. And uh, let me resize that there. You can use Command Equal to set the size of the label to fit the size of the text. So I did that, but now it shrunk to, you know, to the width, so I'll have to reset it here. Um, so anyway, that'll be the temperature. And then maybe underneath the temperature, I'll include a description for the weather. That can be a little smaller. And then maybe underneath that, we'll include the city. So we'll call that one description, and this will be the city name, right? Okay, there we go. So that's pretty good, and we'll need a button to, and you can do anything with this button. I'm just going to put it here for now, and I'll make it go all the way across there like that. And this button right here will be, um, it'll, it'll set the city. So when you, when you tap on this, we're going to, um, we're going to show a little pop-up that will ask you what city you're in. And you type your city name in, and when you close the box, then that will trigger the app to go and get the weather information. Okay. And you can rearrange this, you know, however you want. Maybe you want the, the, um, the temperature to be in the center like that, or maybe we'll do them all in the center, I don't know, right? Something like that. So uh, so we've got that kind of set up, and you can get more detailed here. Um, I'm thinking about adding a picture, too, for the for the weather, right? But we'll, we'll do that later. But for right now, we'll set up some, some basic default constraints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everybody, and what I want to do is lock down the left and the right edges so that these elements always fit the width of this of this view. So I'll go down here to this little pin menu. Looks like a little square TIE fighter. And when I click on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the left and the right bar here. Okay, and then I'll add eight constraints. So that's four on this side and four on the other side. Right, so that's pretty good. Now I've, I'm seeing these red lines because my um, my constraints are not complete and there's not enough information for auto layout to position these things. So first of all, for the temperature, I'm going to choose, I'm going to hold the control key or you can right click and drag. And I'll drag up to the top, towards the top of the screen. And then I'll choose vertical space to top layout guide. Okay, so now this guy has a distance to the top. And then I'll go to the description and do the same thing. I'll hold the control key and then control drag up to the temperature label. And then I'll choose vertical spacing. So what I'm doing here with the first one is I'm saying that this element should be this distance from the top layout guide. 
and the second one should be this distance from the temperature element, right? And then I'm going to repeat the process here, control drag up to description and choose vertical spacing. And then I'll do the same with the button, okay? And so now what we should get is, um, you know, our layout should, should, you know, conform to the size of the or the width of the, the view controller, and then these elements should keep their relative spacing from the top of the screen and from each other, from the vertical you know, distance from each other, right? So anyway, so we're all set there. And uh, let's talk about how we're gonna set this up, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into view controller here, and I'll need to add some IB outlets and an IB action to connect the elements and storyboard to my, my view controller code, right? So here's the code in my view controller. And all the code in the view controller has to fall within the curly braces here. So there's a curly brace here and one at the bottom, okay? And so everything has to be part of this class, so it has to fall inside that code block, right? The curly braces define a code block. So what I'll do is I'll hold the Option key and click on Main Storyboard. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the storyboard here in the Assistant Editor, which is the two little circles up here, right? So we can turn that off by clicking this thing, right? Or maybe we'll click on Main Storyboard again here. I'll, well, actually, first I'm going to click on View Controller so that's visible, and then Option click on Main Storyboard. And that opens it over here on the left or the right side, right? So uh, what I'd like to do now is I want to create um, connections between these elements that I created in Storyboard and my code over here in my view controller. So um, to do that, what I'll do is I'll select the first label here. And what I want to do is create an outlet. So I want to be able to access this label and set the value in it. So I'm holding the control key. You can also right click and drag. I'm using my laptop so there's no right click, right? Um, so I'll, I'll click and drag into the view controller class, right? And then you'll see, you know, it gives me a little label that says insert outlet or outlet collection, okay? And then I'll let go and it gives me this little, this little pop up here and the connection type is outlet and what I'll type is temperature label. Okay, so temp label. Um, and that will create an outlet. So I'll click connect and there's my new outlet. IB outlet weak var temp label type UI label, right? Let's do the same thing. So here's the description label. So I'll click on it, control drag from the description label. And I can see the description label is highlighted there. So I know that that's the one. And then I'll drag in here and choose description label as my name. Okay, and there it is. And then let's do the city label. So we'll say city label. So I'm just repeating the process here. And then for the button. Now the button, um, we're going to make this an IB action. Okay, so an action is something that where um, where the like like the the code and storyboard here sends a message to the code here in our view controller, right? It takes an action, right? Um, labels um, and outlets they don't have any actions. They're not going to do anything. Like the label's not going to you know produce any output for us. Instead, we're going to talk to the label and set the value in the label. So that's why we're setting these to an outlet, right? Because they, they lets us access them and set their text property. The button, on the other hand, someone's going to tap that, and that's going to create an input, right, from the user. And we need to handle that with a function, which is essentially an IB action. So what we'll do is we'll control drag from, again, I'm going to click on the button and then hold the control key and click and drag into my view controller. And I'll set the connection type to action. And then I'll set the name here to, um, how about set city tapped. Okay. And then you can set the type here. You can leave this actually as any object. I'm going to set it to UI 
button. And then we make sure that this is a, um, connection type action. And then we'll click connect. And you'll see what happens here is this creates, um, these created IB outlets, but this one created an IB action and it puts it in the form of a function. Okay, so what's gonna happen is when we tap on this button, this function will be invoked and the code inside the code block for the function will be activated, okay? So that looks pretty good. And, you know, we can close the, the assistant editor for now. And when I go to the IB action, um, you know, function here. Let's put in a print statement. So we'll say print and we'll say, uh, you know, city button tapped. Okay. There we go. So we'll save that. And if we want to test our project, we can, um, I'm going to switch this from iPhone 6 Plus to just the plain old iPhone 6 because the 6 Plus is really big. So uh, I, I don't have a lot of screen space here. So I'm going to make that a little smaller, and then I'll click the uh, the play button there to test our app. And any moment now, it should open up the iPhone simulator. It's just starting up right now. Any moment. Oh, there we go. Any second now. Oh, there there you go, finally. Sorry, that took a while. Um, anyway, so there's our app. And if I tap on City button here, you can see the message shows up. So we know that this is working. Okay? So there we go. So there's, our, there's the start of our app. Now, uh, you know, we could add more information here. You know, I just included three items. And your weather information might want to include the clouds and the, you know, an image and the you know, a maximum minimum temperature for the day or, you know, the humidity and stuff like that. And you can include those in the same way um, by creating labels and connecting them with outlets. Um, just to keep the example simple, I'm going to just use these three outlets for now. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll continue this in the next video.